Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. It's showing up on my page. <laughs> Better than last night. <laughs> you did it. Well done. Great start. <laughs> once in a while. As my husband says, a blind squirrel once in a while finds a net. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> This is the first time I've actually been on time since we moved. <laughs> People are like, wait, you're, you're early. <laughs> you're not supposed to be on for another couple hours. <laughs> We're here, we did it. We're live. <laughs> Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for the supporters, I really apologize about last night. I posted it on my personal page instead of this page, and you can't see it. I'm going to redo it tonight. That was uh, oopsie. I hadn't even started drinking. It was, it was just, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> So this morning, we're bringing you a special guest. As you know, this weekend, we have the Cat Summit. Unfortunately, it's running uh, alongside the Dog Gut Health Summit. Um, but if you've signed up, you'll get the recordings. So don't worry if you aren't with us live, you will still get the information. Um, but only if you signed up. And if you haven't signed up yet, it is pinned on the page where you need to go to sign up for the Cat Summit. So Gwen, uh, in her infinite wisdom, found us yet another guest who is amazing. And uh, she's from England, right? Okay. And she has a group called Naturally Cats, which is very cool because we not only are interested in natural health for our dogs, but also for our cats. Now we're getting into the horses and the chickens and the donkeys and goats, why not, um, and ourselves. So uh, today we want to talk about how we can use herbs to heal our cats. And I think in this case, we're not talking about giving them pills or tinctures. I think we are actually talking about real herbs. And um, I, I love having an herb garden. I grow a lot of herbs. My cats are madly in love with my homegrown catnip. And when I bring it in, uh, some of them just roll in it. Some of them carry it around. One of them actually eats the leaves. Uh, like it's a great snack. So um, Julianne, introduce yourself and give us a little background on what it is that you do. And then we can talk about what the cats do. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, Judy. I was just turning around to my side because my little cat, my rescue cat, Leo, has just come in. He's very shy and I was hopeful that he'd jump up to say hello, but he's already left. So if you see <laughs> I've locked my cats at, out. <laughs> if you see a black tail at some point, it's him coming up to sort of give a very, very shy hello. Uh, so thank you very much for having me today. I'm really excited to, like you said, to talk to you guys about uh, herbs and how they can help cats. So I am a holistic cat therapist. Uh, I've got a, a book out, so I'm an author. I'm also an empath and a behaviorist. So I'm not a traditional cat behaviorist because I don't just look at the problem behavior and then fix that. You know, I look at the whole picture. So for me, cats are really uh, emotional, sentient beings. And I believe that we need to look at not just their environment, but their relationships, you know, their nutrition everything that affects them basically. So, so that's what I do. I use a mixture of different tools and techniques. So I do behavior modification if it's needed, but I also look at the cat's um, energy. I can do healing. I also use botanical remedies like essential oils, herbs, which we're going to talk about today to try to help the cat find balance. Because for me, if there's a problem behavior, there's generally an emotional cause, there's an emotional reason. We're talking about stress, anxiety, fear, to name the top three. And we need to support the cat with that, right? We need to look at their emotions and how, why are they presenting that behavior to us? So I, I don't kind of just, you know, I'm not a one-stop shop. 
and uh, I'm thrilled to be able to share with your community today the fact that like you said with catnip right we can use herbs to help cats and it's a really simple safe way to to introduce it so before I go for a tangent because I could talk about this topic for, forever so if you've got questions feel free to fire them at me well <clears throat> So one of the, and I think I saw this on your Instagram or uh, I think Gwen talked to me about it a little bit um, that you will actually select a group of herbs and then let the cat self-select what they need. How do you do that? I mean, do you walk your cats out into the herb garden? Do you pick, you know, four that you think the cat might need? How do you decide what to offer the cat? Yeah. So, so yeah, so I have, there's two ways that I do it. I've got a shop online on my website and we sell 10 different gardens as I call them. So each garden has got six herbs and you can buy them. For example, if your cat's dealing with anxiety, we've got an anxiety garden, we've got a change in the home garden, we've got a pain garden and they're herbs that generally in my 15 plus years experience that cats will use if they're suffering from that that um, particular uh, situation so it's not fresh they're all dried and 90% of my shop is organic so all the herbs are organic and the reason that they're dried is because the energy frequency changes so you know better than most you know how energy can affect us all you know we're all made of energy and cats are very, very subtle, very sensitive to energy. So, yes, if you've got an outdoor cat, they can go outside, they can choose to rub against a rose bush, for example, you know, and there's sort of the volatiles, the essential oil, you know, from the plant, the scent, they will inhale it. So I work completely on self-selection principles. So I don't add anything to food. I believe that, you know, cats and all animals have the capacity to choose what they need to heal, you know, so we give them, I give them a choice and that's part of naturally cats uh, beliefs. It's, you know, giving cats a voice. So you give them the option to choose. So basically when I work with, with a, um, a client or a family, you know, I can tune into the energy of the cat. I can tune into it emotionally. So it might be presenting with stress, but actually it might be anxiety. So I will choose herbs that I feel drawn to. But like I said, I know not everyone has the kind of, um, has been able to tap into that ability. So that's why I've put the gardens together because, you know, when you put them down for cats, giving them that option, giving them that choice suddenly gives them freedom. And if you think about how we have domesticated cats, we've taken away a lot of that freedom from them. You know, yeah. we're, feeding them at certain times we dictate whether they can go in and out and obviously it's all to keep them safe and to keep them well but we need to be giving them a little bit more in, in my opinion so we put down a herb garden it's like it's basically a blanket or a towel um and we put it in a quiet space in the home so somewhere there's not a lot of foot traffic you know for example like ours is in the corner of the dining room for leo and we put a good a good sized pinch of uh, four or five herbs, you know, on the mat and he can use it as and when he needs to. And it really depends on the kind of personality of the cat as to how they'll use it. So some cats will dive straight in, they'll rub and roll, they'll get themselves, you know, wrapped up in the, t in the towel, the herbs will go everywhere <laughs> and they're having an absolutely great time, you know, which is lovely to see. But not all cats react that way, just like humans, you know, we're all different. They're all different. So Leo's a very timid cat. He was previously feral, so he's very reserved. He will use the garden when we're asleep and he will generally only sit with it, sit near it, sit on it. But because the herbs are dried, the, the frequency of them is very light, you know. So if you open up the little bag of rosebud, you can smell them. And obviously a cat's sense of smell is so much more uh, stronger than ours. So they can sit with it and still benefit from the properties of the plant or the herb or flower. So it's a, it's a beautiful way to kind of give them the opportunity to cope with the day to day. Right. We're, we're asking them to live with us. We're all crazy manic. I mean, I know I am a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Right. You hear me, people. You know, there's like 50 million things going on and cats are very present. You know, they're, they're very much in the moment. And when we've asked them to come and live with us, regardless of being an indoor and outdoor cat, they pick up on our energy, they pick up on our frequency. So when we're super busy and our energy's like, you know, they they 
they want to come and heal us. They want to come and be with us because that's one of the reasons that they're with us. But also, you know, we have a duty to help them, help them release their emotions. So that's what the, what the gardens are for. That's what they aim to do. So you said you have 10 different gardens, which I think is very cool. Um, are you growing all of the herbs that you offer? No. no, no, I get them in from suppliers. So they're, they're, I don't go. Sadly, if I have a plant in my home within usually about two weeks, it's, you know, it's gone. <laughs> I, I am not green fingered. I, it's sad to say. <laughs> well, you're good with dried herbs. <laughs> yes, very much so. <laughs> so, um, so you have 10 different uh groupings that you offer yeah. um are they all geared for for behavior or any of them healing so let's say we had a cat with a heart problem a urinary tract problem which uh, frankly um a heart problem is a shen disturbance so there is a behavior pattern associated with that urinary tract infections and cystitis are very commonly associated with stress in cats so are are the are the herb gardens labeled as different um like one for fear, one for anxiety, one for stress, or are any of them labeled as like healing herbs for different medical issues? Great question. It's a bit of a mixture. It's more towards the behavior and emotional side. Uh, there are three gardens that are kind of linked to the physical. So there's one for digestion. So it supports either vomiting and or diarrhea, you know, or constipation. It's got, you know, marshmallow root to, to help with the mucus and chickweed to support, you know, soothing the digestive tract. There's also two. One is... Uh, called pain and the other is called elderly cat it used to be called inflammation and those sort of sets of herbs um are to you know help like valerian it's you know it's like it's got sedative properties so it helps just to ease the pain the physical pain in the body um the others are, are more emotional so there's one that's called uplifting there's one that's called comforting there's one that's changing the home aggression anxiety and trust so they're all there's a, there is a, a very much a mixture, you know, but obviously one herb can help with several things. So like calendula, for example, you know, I've got that in the, we've got a general garden. If you're not sure where to start, you know, we've got one that's called general that's recommended, you know, and, and calendula can help to reduce inflammation, but it also boosts self-confidence. So you've got a dual effect, you know, it's not just for that one thing in each garden. Very cool. I think my cats could have used about uh, six of those gardens in the last few weeks with the moving. Uh, the poor things when we <clears throat> moved out of the other house, of course, moving into this house, we've got doors open all the time, people going in and out, strangers, you know, just a lot of commotion. So <clears throat> I left the cats alone at the other house in mm -hmm. their cat room, which was a bedroom with right. all their stuff. Uh, but they were alone for three days and then I would show up to offer food and water and clean the litter box. And they were like, oh, you know, what's up with this? Mm -hmm. um, and then when they came here, we built this really cool cat condo, which is basically a bunch of boxes and then a climbing thing around the top. But we locked them in the condo. So they were kind of like, OK, we just traveled in a box in a car and now you just locked us in another series of boxes they have windows they can see out, but they were kind of like, okay, we can see out. We see all you doing what you're doing. And we're stuck yeah. in here. Poor cats. I, yeah. Talk about stress. I, frankly, I probably should have thrown some, some flower essences or some, I did throw some uh, CBD treats in there for them. I was like, here, you guys just, you know, go take a chill. Yeah. Um, but it's been yeah. very stressful for them. Yeah. And we have one cat who walks around that he's, he's a, he's a wackadoo, but he ha walks around the house screaming at mm. night mm. um <laughs> so i'm looking forward to getting these herbs because there's going to be some herbs for these cats if i can stop the screaming yeah. at night i'll be real happy <laughs> i was going to say you've got you've got a couple of packages coming to you so hopefully they'll be with you soon they were posted i think it was last week week before um and it's 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 heartbreaking to hear that about the yowling at night my previous cat pickle who inspired all of naturally cats she was horrendously poorly we had issues you know she was diabetic for over 10 years we had pancreatitis arthritis gingivitis you know we had a lot to deal with you know <laughs> and, yeah exactly and um she would do that 3 a.m you know it's like a it, i can't even the, the noise would just go right through me oh it's yeah screaming right it's, it's it's not a yowling it's a screaming and <laughs> yeah it was it was hard to deal with and i always say to people you know be aware of your own emotions and energy. You know, you need to take time away. You need to take time out. You need to top up 
I call it a sparkle jar. You know, we've all got a jar of sparkles and some things take out and some things put in. And when we were dealing with pickle, she would constantly be weighing in different places because she couldn't get into the tray. We had a low tray. She'd still miss it. She'd be on the sofa because she couldn't move. It was it was horrendous. Now I look back on it, you know, so we had she she inspired me to learn about the herbs. And, you know, we, we eventually moved to stronger concentrations we moved to use essential oils with her but that's a whole other topic but I, I agree with you you know herbs are such a great way to support them and and it sounds like you know you did the best you could with the move and that's all that any of us can do in any moment you know right. you do what you think is right right here and now and you know they might take a while to adjust as I'm sure you know but um, when the herbs come in you know get them down the floor and see what happens. <laughs> well, they're getting much better. They're now allowed out of their condo and they've Excellent. been exploring the house. Uh, they started coming out at night and exploring the house at night when everybody else was not raising a ruckus. Uh, but it's kind of funny. We just got a new puppy this week and th they don't seem to mind the new puppy at all. But if they, if they get even the least bit kind of wigged out with something going on they're running back in their condo so they they have decided oh, it is their safe place that's where their yeah. food is that's where their litter boxes are they're using the litter boxes yay um <laughs> so yeah uh they're kind of funny though they still haven't the uh track around the top of the room yeah they've only gone about halfway around they they haven't uh okay. they haven't crossed the bridges mm -hmm. and the the steps now they are older cats, so they're, you know, they're not as agile as they used to be. And they haven't had the ability to do that kind of climbing and jumping. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see how that goes. I may have to bring Gwen's young cat over to, to zip around up there and show our guys <laughs> how to do it. <laughs> you, you'll be surprised. You know, they, they, cats do adjust. It just takes a bit of time. And if they've yep. never had the capacity to do it, they don't know their own boundaries, right? They right. don't know their own limits. So, you know, just, I, I would say be patient. I'm sure they'll figure it out. Well, yeah, there's, sure there's, we've put their favorite food treats on all the different things and they're sort of, you know, gingerly working their way around. So, and mm -hmm. they're pretty food motivated. So that does yeah. help. <laughs> always helpful. <laughs> so you said you've written a book. What's your book about? Oh yeah. So my book is called The Aromatic Cat. Oh, how cool. And uh, again, that's coming to you with the, with the garden. So it's all about how to use remedies, botanical remedies, uh, herbs, essential oils, and hydrosols to help your cat, basically. So I, my passion is herbs. My co-author, Nayana Morag, she likes hydrosols, and we both love essential oils. And we know that there is a real misconception about cats and essential oils in that, you know, there were some tragic stories about, you know, a cat being shaved, covered in tea tree oil, and it died, sadly. And, and then this kind of belief has, has evolved that essential oils are bad for cats and you can't use them with cats. And I know it's a very controversial topic. You know, I did a pl diploma for two and a half years learning how to use essential oils with cats using self-selection. So that's what the book is about. We were very passionate to share with people how to use them safely, how to use them in your own home, you know, and it was it was about trying to support people, trying to help break those myths to help educate people. So we've got 40 botanical profiles, um, you know, everything from, uh, you know, Linden and um, Valerian to Angelica Root, Rose, you know, it's all sorts. It's really hard to keep it to 40, but we talk about, you know, the history of the plant or the, the flower. And then we've got in there physical uses and behavioral uses. So for example, I've just opened it on Linden, and we've got, you know, for physical support, it helps with nasal congestion, heart palpitations and digestion and behavioral, you know, lack of trust, fearful, anxious cats, over grooming. So, you know, we've tried to cover as, as much as we can. And, and at the back, we've got some reference tables as well. So you can look and see, you know, the condition that you're looking for and which remedies will help. And then we talk about which format. So for me, the format really depends on the um what's the word the kind of the how chronic the situation is yeah. you know herbs are great for well-being and day-to-day -day and a very soft approach if you've got a very very chronic situation essential oils because the concentration is so much stronger it's probably better but we talk in there about what to look for how to tell if your cat is choosing a remedy how it will affect your cat but if you use self-selection you know you can't go wrong that's that's about giving the cat a choice so you don't we don't we don't diffuse we don't talk about diffusing and i know some people do with essential oils 
But in here, we talk about using a bottle, you have the lid on and you offer it and you see what the cat's reaction is. You know, you read the cat, you start at a distance, you come slightly closer if they're kind of doing the slow blinks and, the, and they're giving deep breaths. Sometimes with some cats, you can see the nostrils, you know, really flaring. Um, we also talk about, you know, you can put one drop on a bit of fabric and then leave it on the floor because the cat can go to and fro with it. And then with uh, with the hydrosols, Nayana talks about how you can dilute them. You know, you can put one drop into, you know, say 100 mils of water, put it down and sometimes the cat will ingest it. So like people would recommend with rescue remedy, you know, we always say if you're going to put remedies down, especially in water, always have fresh water available. Never add it to your cat's only water source. So it's really about about remedies and how you can help your cat everything from like first aid to you know day to day well being. So like our little cat Leo, he's asthmatic. Pickle was diabetic, and um, you know I've always used remedies to support them. So he has a an, an inhaler over his face every day with steroids. We tried to get him off it, but it's just we're just not there yet. So we have um, he has spirulina powder mixed with uh, a bit of water or a bit of vegetable oil down on a little saucer. And every now and again, you know, you see him go to it. He takes a few licks and you know he he walks away. And and sometimes it's down for a, you know a few days or a week and he doesn't go near it. So mm. it, it's all about. What, what, what does he need you know how can i how can i help him yeah I, I, self-selection is really important and i originally learned about that with horses and mm. you know what is recommended is that you plant a hedgerow with a lot of different medicinal plants and the horses will go yes. in there and just self-select what they need i've yes. seen it with my dogs when i'm planting gardens and they're out there trying to eat it as fast as i'm trying to get it in the ground um, so th the animals are very good at that and you're right. You're not going to overdose them if you're letting them self-select what they need. Yes. And I like what you said about essential oils, because that is a huge myth, but part of the problem, mm -hmm. yes, cats have died from oil diffusers or fragrance diffusers. And the problem is when we hear those stories, a lot of times it's not an essential oil that is pure and that was made to be used for animals. It's basically a fragrance with volatile oils that can be very toxic. So there's a huge difference. And I know that uh, Melissa Shelton, who's also known as the oily vet, I mean, all she does is essential oils. And when she gets on a rant about the myth of cats not being able to use essential oils, it's kind of fun to listen to. Uh, you <laughs> have to do this, but um, you know, she she's very adamant that yes, we can use oils for cats, but they have to be <clears throat> very pure, mm -hmm. and they have to be really made for using with cats, not these cheap things that are basically fragrances to make your house smell good, because those can be very toxic, not only to the cats but to ourselves. We just don't realize it so absolutely absolutely they, they're, they're, they're not it's not neat essential oil it's not the plant compound there are other chemicals in there right. to make it smell nice you know plugins and reeds and things like that they're synthetic and, and as you know as humans you know if you think back you know eons ago we're not used to processing that so you know we have issues with our liver processing those toxins let alone cats as well so i completely agree the quality of the oil that you use is really, really important. And also, you know, you need to give the cat a choice. You know, I know when I need a tablet for a headache, for example, or, or whatever it may be, you know, I try not to take drugs myself, but you know what I'm trying to say, you know, I need, I know what I need to heal and our cats do as well. And we need to give them that choice. So rather than, you know, us thinking, oh, I'm going to diffuse so-and-so, or I'm going to use this, you let them show you what they need, you know, and, and that is the big difference that we try to put in to the aromatic cat that it's about giving your cat a choice in its treatment and they know exactly what they need you know leo like i said with the spirulina you know will go to it as and when he needs it i don't put it in his food because i don't he doesn't need it every day you know i wouldn't need a medication every day and right. if you use something when you don't need it that's when you can have the the reactions and things to right. it so so somebody asked they, they have a puppy so if they were to put the herbs or a drop of oil on a cloth down for their cats <clears throat> would it be okay for the puppy as well? And I, I mean, my thinking was, first of all, these are very safe. Um, yeah, the puppy might run and jump and play in it just because puppies think it's fun to grab a rag and run with it. Um, but my thinking is it's not going to hurt them. We're not, we're not putting down something that's so concentrated that it's going to be at all toxic. No. So I, 
I will admit I am the cat lady, you know, so dogs, are, you know, asking me dog questions is a bit like, you know, a bit of a dodgy ground, but I agree with what you're saying. My concern would be the fact that a puppy likes to play. So, you know, when you talk about a rag for, for a cat, you know, you're talking like, I don't know, the, the size of a post-it piece of fabric because they will go and sit near it, you know, whereas with a puppy, they're likely to, to chew that, you know. What you, essential oils and herbs are very safe with all animals. You know, Nyana's got a book, The Aromatic Dog, you know, which again talks about how to use them. So I think as long as you're aware that the, the dog doesn't try to eat the piece of fabric, when it comes to herbs, they will be ingested. Cats as well as dogs will ingest them if they need <laughs> Our, our stream just kind of went dead on her end. So we'll see if, if it comes back. Um, so what I would say, if you have cats and you have puppies running around, that what you want to think about doing is maybe put your cat's herb plate, paper, whatever it's going to be, up high where the cat can jump up and there she's coming back, uh, where the cat could get to it. So put it on an elevated surface where the puppy can't reach it and the cat can. Just because it's not going to hurt the puppy, but if you're going to defeat the purpose if your puppy takes the piece of paper and runs off with it, leaving a trail of herbs behind, uh, <laughs> and then your cat is not going to have them. So I'm thinking about this. I mean, clearly we have a puppy and we've got three cats who have been pretty stressed, although they're, they're calming down. Um, but if I were going to, I would probably put this in my cat condo where the cats can get to it um, and the, the puppy cannot. That's kind of why we have the cat condo because they can't get to the litter. The dogs can't get to the litter box, which is lovely. <laughs> so, and it also has stopped all tracking of litter through the house because it stays in the cat condo. So I am, that's, that's kind of the most exciting thing because the vacuuming three times a day around the cat litter was kind of making me a little nuts, but, um, <laughs> so, so the cat condo is very, very good for that. Um, and actually our cat condo is going to be featured in an article on Redfin, which is a, uh, a home sale site. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. Um, I, I am excited about your book. Did you send Gwen copies of your book or a copy? yeah you've got it you've got two gardens and you've got two gardens and a book coming your way absolutely okay. and then um, i think people... she's ordering a bunch to we are going to carry these on our website so that they will be in the u.s and easy for people to get that'll yes. probably take us a couple of weeks to get that all set up so um for those of you who are interested is your book available on amazon barnes and noble anywhere yeah, else it's yeah, it's on Amazon and you can also get a signed copy from my website, which is uh, www.naturallycats.co.uk. Head to the shop tab. Um, you can get the gardens from there. I do ship to the US. So you're absolutely right. We're in the process of getting gardens to you guys to put in your shop and we're, not, we're, we're trying to sort the details out. So if anybody's interested in the meantime, they can get them from me. Um, and um, uh, also on your affiliates page as well I've given a code for people to get 10% off everything in my shop so just uh, if people head to your site first to get the code and then you can input that and you can get 10% off the gardens in the book if people are interested yay yay uh, Gwen my daughter has a question she's on she says I have a question what is a good setup for food source versus cat litter mine are in the same room and I'm wondering if that's good so if they're in the same room, literally opposite ends, opposite ends of the room. So, you know, if you think about yourself, where would you want to eat your dinner? You know, if not you're in, in a tiny room, not where you poop, <laughs> not where you wee. No. So completely opposite ends. And what I would also say is just as a slight aside. Hi, Gwen. Um, when you've got food and water bowls, don't put them side by side. So in the wild, cats would never drink from a water source near a, near their kill, near their prey, um, because it could be infected with bacteria from the carcass. So um, if you've got a small room, you know, you've got your litter tray in one corner, your food in the other, just slightly down the way from the water, uh, from the food bowl, put the water bowl, um, just because it, you know, if it's next to each other, they're very unlikely to drink obviously some cats will if that's the only water source they've got but to encourage drinking put it somewhere slightly different and drinking is a, and now i gotta go move my cat's water bowl because it's in between two food bowls so <laughs> thank you no it's great I thought it'll just go into a different section of the condo they also have water available outside the condo but sometimes okay. they don't come out um but, you know, not drinking enough is a huge cat problem. Um, our cats don't drink very much because they only get uh, raw food 
or canned food. So it's a very high moisture diet and cats are not big drinkers. And that is one of the reasons we see so much cystitis crystals in the urine because they're not drinking enough. They're not diluting out their urine. They're not urinating often enough. Many cats will only urinate once a day. And if they're not drinking and particularly if they're eating a dry kibble diet, which we absolutely don't recommend for kitty cats, um, that's where we get into trouble with all the urinary issues, kidney issues with a lot of these cats. So, um, and I think a lot of us are doing it wrong. We, we have this little cat area and it's like, okay, well, here's your litter box. Here's your food bowl right next to it. And there's your water bowl right next to that. And I mean, if you serve me my dinner on the toilet, I'm not going to eat. I, I'm sorry. And my bathroom is very clean, but I don't really want to eat my meals in my bathroom. So no, um, no. I mean, my litter boxes and my food are separated on different levels of the condo. So there's, you know, that's not next to each other, but yeah. it is difficult, um, you know, especially like in the last house where I didn't have a great cat space, their food and litter weren't separated by more than about five feet, which is not perfect, but we had mm. everything in one room. Um, yeah. So it like, is- you, like you, you, do, you do the best you can with what you've right. got, you know, right. and, and also- understanding of cats has evolved so you know back say I don't know even like just 30 years ago you'd get plastic bowls that were you know two compartments and you still get them now you know so you think that's that's okay to use so I would always advocate for um ceramic or stainless steel bowls because with plastic bowls the plastic com components can leach into the food um and like you said you know cats aren't big drinkers but that's because they generally get the moisture from their diet. So there is this kind of concern that my cat's not drinking, I should be worried. But if you're feeling feeding a high quality raw or wet food diet, don't panic. You know, that then they're, they're not big drinkers because they get their moisture from their food. Right. Absolutely right, though, Judy. If they're fed a dry food, you will see them drink more. It's not species appropriate. You know, cats are carnivores, you know, cats, lions and tigers. They don't go and eat heads of corn. They're eating, you know, <laughs> the antelope and the bone, the you know, the the heart, the spleen, the liver, the lungs, all of it. You know, the fur, the skin. Um, we we made dry food. You know, man yeah. made dry food. It's not an evolutionary. You know, it, it, it's not um, an evolutionary involvement for them. We've done that. So yes. no wonder there's obesity and UTIs and diabetes on the rise with cats because we're feeding them crap. You know, even like the high quality dry food. It's still very it's, processed. It's, it's still you it's know, processed and it's loaded with carbohydrates, which cats just don't process. Well, they, no. they process it into fat and then we get obese, diabetic, arthritic. You yep. name it. <laughs> you yep. and, and also the chemicals that go with it. So, you know, cats use their sense of smell for everything that their, their world is defined by their sense of smell, you know, their territory, their food, everything. So how do you make dry, dehydrated, processed food appeal to cats? You know, you have to cover it. You have to coat it with chemicals, with flavorings, with additives. So if you look on the, the ingredients label for dry food, I guarantee you there'll be things you can't pronounce because that's the stuff that they've got to put on the dry food to make it smell nice to cats. Yes. You know, I mean, we, we feed raw food. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not preaching. I learned all this the hard way. You know, we had pickle. She was a stray. She was she looked pitiful. You know, we free fed. That's, she came to us with, with dry and wet. That's what we'd fed her. And then when she was diabetic, I had a huge learning curve about how, what goes into dry food, how it affects their bodies, why we couldn't get her diabetes stable because she was on dry food. You know, we did wet for a good while. Then we went to raw. And to be honest with you, you know, I recommend raw to all my clients and my community. Not everybody can do it. It's not for everyone. You know, I'm a vegan and I, and it's difficult, but I know that that's what Leo needs, right? Pickle couldn't tolerate it as she got older she, her bowel was very slow with with movement so we had a we had a wet and raw you know but it's not for everyone but if you can feed the best quality wet you can look at the ingredients the less the less number of ingredients you've got the better you know it is yeah yep. and being able to pronounce everything on the label is pretty important really yeah um, so I'm excited I cannot wait to get some herb gardens uh, you know the problem is Gwen's going to get them first and they'll probably go home to her cats. And then I'm going to be like, Oh, wait a minute. I'm the one with the stress cats. Although she has, she has a couple stress, stress cats. At her, say, house. Yeah. Um, her, yeah. her kitten kitten. He's like three now. Um, he's amazing. Like that cat, you can take him anywhere, do anything, expose him to anything. And he's just like, mm -hmm. yay, life is great. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Her older cat is just stressed all the time. And then she was babysitting her father's cat because her father is in between houses. And, you know, while they're trying to find a new house, moving from state to state. So Gwen took the cat, but the cat is so stressed. Um, yeah, I feel sorry for that cat. She's, she's always been a little bit of a stress kitty, but man, is she stressed right now. So uh, I guess I'll let her steal the herbs first. My cats are adjusting, Uh, (laughs) but we'll get some more. Uh, I'm really excited about it. So, um, I, I, I'm excited about the book. I'm excited about the herbs. Uh, this is kind of new territory for me. I haven't used, and I, I like how we're able to treat the cats because Mm -hmm. people would come to me With, I do consultations all the time and people, I do a lot more dog consultations than cats because when people yeah. come to me with their cat, I'm like, well, I can tell you what herbs I would use, but they're going to be in a pill powder or tincture form. Mm-hmm. You got to get it into the cat. Mm-hmm. And that can be so difficult. It's like, uh, yes, I can tell you 20 supplements that are going to be beneficial for your cat. I'm not the one who has to shove them down the cat's throat. I don't like shoving things down cat's throats. Um, I don't think we should force things on our animals. Like my dogs, all of their supplements are in their food bowl. And if I add something new and they go, "Mm, not eating, like, oh, okay, maybe that was the wrong thing. Mm. Um, So, you know, I, I love the idea of offering the cat something and saying, well, you get to pick. Um, and you're going to get, and that's one of the things that, uh, I think many of us, uh, make a mistake and, I, and in the horse world, this is huge that we're always trying to scream at the animals and scream at their, uh, immune system, um, scream our, uh, commands to them when everything really needs to be a whisper. Mm-hmm. We really need to, and we saw this so much when I was teaching, uh, riding, Mm-hmm. all my little lesson students, whether they were adults mm-hmm. or children, but you know, you say, okay, nudge the horse on the sides to ask it to move forward. And you see the legs go whoop, you know, and the horse is like, Wah! and uh, you know, when you watch a very high level rider, you see zero movement. Mm-hmm. And because they're just doing a subtle weight shift or a subtle mm-hmm. position shift with a, with a finger on the reins or a, 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 you know, a gentle pressure on the sides, you know, a little bit forward, a little bit back. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you see that, you realize how subtle we can be to Absolutely. get across because it's uh, like you said, it's all energy mm-hmm. and energy is, is very subtle. Mm -hmm. And so this, you know, using herbs or one drop of an oil and saying, okay, you know, I'm going to whisper at you. And it's amazing how well the body can do when we allow it to do it in that manner. Very much so. I completely agree. And I think there is a, for me, you know, I use on all of my like social media and everything hashtag giving cats the voice because, you know, we need to wake up and realize that they can actually tell us, they can tell us what they need. We just need to listen. And and actually, you know, there's this huge misconception that cats are really aloof and don't need a lot of, you know, interaction and, uh, you know, need a lot less than dogs. And it's absolutely not true. You know, what I would say is you, nutrition is the foundation for cats. If you've got good nutrition, you know, we've talked about that before, wet or raw, the body in itself will look after itself. The next step really is emotions. And that's what's getting missed. And that's what I'm about. It's helping people to understand the emotional awareness of their cats. Because if you're dealing, like you said about you and Gwen, you know, my heart breaks for both of you. And, and in my head, I'm like fi- thinking of 50 things to like to try to help support you both. Because that's that's the way I'm wired. You know, it, it's about understanding each cat and what they need. So every human's different and every cat is different. You know, my dad's got two cats from the same litter. One is super, you know, super chilled out. He's just been for an hour and a half uh, car journey to get some scans done. He's come home, absolutely fine. The other cat wheezes a lot around the house because he's so sensitive to the slightest change in his environment now you know when I've talked to my dad about it obviously he's finding it frustrating and really irritable you know the cat's weeing everywhere but I'm like okay so what are we doing to support Seppi what does he need you know what does he need in his environment he needs consistency he needs routine he needs a lot of scent work if you change things in the house you know and that's that's what I'm passionate about because the sensitivity of cats 
is what is really misunderstood you know understanding what they need and how we can provide it like you said with energy you know there are times when I finish work and I love my job and I'm you know it's been like a back-to-back day of calls or something's just not gone right usually technology and I finish my day and I'm like oh you know and I want to go and find Leo and have cuddles because it make me feel better but actually what I've realized is that what I need to do is first of all catch my breath and take a few deep breaths to ground and center myself to release a bit of energy and then what I need to do is approach him and say can you tolerate my energy can you tolerate physical touch from me right now and I don't get me wrong I don't do it all the time but when I'm aware of that you know the reaction from him is so different yeah. you know he doesn't take touch all the time and I'd love to have a cuddly cat but that's not him and that's that's not where we are right now so I accept him for, for how he is so you know, the sensitivity of our emotions and our energy with our cats is, is something that, you know, I'm, I'm just so passionate to talk about. And I'm aware we've been online for like 40 minutes. So I maybe share that for another time. But um, yeah, it's, it's really key. You know, I've just created a course to, to help people raise this awareness, you know, to understand how themselves and how their energy affects their cat and, and how it can deepen their relationship. Once you bring, you know, your awareness into the kind of the present moment, really. Absolutely. Uh, is that course on your website as well? Yeah. So it's called Connected Cats. If you go, to, everything's like under the shop tab. So it's under services. It's called Connected Cats. It's four weeks. It's four Thursdays. And basically it's four different modules. So we do mind, heart, body and spirit. And we look at, you know, ourselves and then our cats. So, you know, it's, it's amazing. The, the intake we had last month, one lady said to me, you've opened up my heart so much. and Now I can't go back. And my relationship with my cat has completely changed. And I said, you know, music to my ears understanding ourselves is a great way to start to then connect more with our cats yeah absolutely uh, and I think um you know even if you don't have cats a course like that it'll work with any animal it'll Definitely. work with the other people in your house yes. when I was still in clinical practice and I would have a really rough 13 hour day and I would come home just Ugh! You know, my husband is like, how fast can I get out of this house? I got to, <laughs> could, could you go take a shower, have a glass of wine, and then I'll talk to you. Um, yeah. My and, husband and does that. He says to me, do you need to meditate? I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> something, something, um, you know, and then you, you walk in and all the animals come <laughs> running to you and then they scatter just as fast. They're like, mm, yeah, I'm not getting near yeah. you yet. <laughs> I'm not going near you. No, exactly. Exactly. And that is a real testament, right? Just how sensitive they can be. So you walk into a room and you're like, oh God, they've had an argument. You can feel it, you know, and, and, and it's just the same for joy and happiness. You know, when you feel really, really great, everyone feels that around you and all the emotions and energy in between. We talk about it in the course, like the emotional scale. And it is really interesting, like you said, just how you can see the animals and people either draw to you or kind of, you know, go yeah. away from you. But yeah, we probably should uh, use amazing. our animals as the gauge as to whether we should interact with everybody else in the house. Yeah. <laughs> like if they're running. <laughs> okay reset going out coming back in <laughs> yeah yeah and, and cats are great mirrors you know they really show us where we've got oh, opportunities yeah. to grow to learn to evolve you know to understand I mean like I said with Leo you know it's it's day to day it's it's wonderful just to see him trust a little bit more or to you know retreat a little bit more and I look at him and I look at myself and think okay where where do I need help what do I need to do for me that will then eventually help him Okay, we've, we've got your website in the, um, it's been posted a couple of times in the thread, which is great. You, so everyone. people know where to go to find, I, I can't wait to get the book. I'm excited. Uh, I haven't, yeah. I haven't read a, a good like uh, educational book in a while because we've been so crazy. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and this, I think this is a great intro to our cat summit weekend. This was kind of a great little addition. Um, had we known about you sooner, we would have just put you in the lineup for the weekend, but that's okay. You basically are the intro for the weekend. So it worked out really well. Um, so for those of you who want more information, naturallycats.co.uk, I think this is amazing information. Um, and there's so much more to learn. I think my cats will really benefit from us having met you. So that is an awesome thing. Uh, I'm kind of like your dad. I've, I've got uh, two that are siblings, 
the male mm -hmm. mittens is a 15 pound, uh, just a love bug wants to be in your lap all the time. And his sister is five pounds. She has, uh, an overbite, like she's a mess. Um, and she's the one when she gets stressed, I wasn't sure who was doing it, but we figured it out when she gets stressed, she pees somewhere. Um, and yeah. that's a problem clearly. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited to have some herbs to solve yeah. that problem she's a yeah I, did. I sent you too, two, i sent you two different gardens so you've got i think it's you'll have 12 different herbs i can't remember now which gardens Ooh. i sent you but um in each in each pouch you get a pouch and then there's six little pack packets inside and inside the packet of herbs is basically enough for two gardens so oh, don't cool. tell Gwen don't be stingy you know don't just put a tiny <laughs> pinch, you know? don't steal all my herbs Gwen. No, no, no. you want you want like a good half the bag you know because you want the cat to be able to sniff it smell it and like i said if they want to ingest it some cats might because they need the properties internally um but yeah don't don't be stingy with it you know and <laughs> um and like you said her and i are, are orchestrating getting i've got it i've got the order actually already on the table I just need postage and things we're trying to sort out getting that to you guys so that you know it's in your shop as well because it's about giving them a choice you know and and the book is really to support that so to help people learn and understand you know it's not catnip isn't the only herb that we can offer to cats you know and actually you see it in cushions and toys and I'm like oh take it out offer the herb you know see if they <laughs> want it and we'll buy itself <laughs> Well, I can't wait to get all my herb gardens in place. Basically, everything that I had got destroyed when we started doing the landscaping around. So I, you know, the house was being built and I put in a big garden and the builder was like, you're a pain in my neck because your garden is in the middle of everything I'm trying to get done here. I'm like, I don't care. I've got the garden. But then when it came time for landscaping and to get the CO, we had to flatten everything. I think oh, I have no. two candles left out there. <laughs> so uh, I'm really excited to get everything back in and get the herb garden going again. So it'll be fun. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, this is, this is eye opening. I think we'll have to do this a couple more times and talk about some of the other things because Absolutely. You're a wealth of information, which is great. And it's, uh, I find this with all of our holistic practitioners, you find that one thing that really speaks to you and then you dive in head first and then you become this great wealth of information for everyone else. So thank you yeah. for doing what you do. Uh, the cats, thank you because I, you know, Gwen I just posted on here that she needs to upgrade her cat setup. She totally, <laughs> I could have told her that. She needs to upgrade her cat setup. No blame, uh, her, no shame. <laughs> her, poor, her poor cats. But, you know, my poor cats for the last nine months, their cat setup hasn't been great either. I kind of didn't have a big choice, but. Um, you do what you can. Like I said, yeah. you do the best you can with what you've got. One, yeah. I usually, I, I go live every Wednesday on Instagram and Facebook. And, you know, one of the talks that I did, I said to people, what's the one thing you can do today? You know, it's one of the talks. Think about one thing you could do. Could you change something, move something? How can you help your cat? Just one thing today, you know, but beating yourself up about it doesn't get you anywhere. You know, you did the best you could. And now you've got a bit more information. Like you said, you know, I am, you know, I could talk about cats until, you know, the cows come home. And I said to Gwen, I'd love to support your community and share the cat knowledge that I have and um you know try to help guardians as much as possible because that's that's what we're you know what I'm here for to be of service to others and help them understand their cats to give cats a voice really it's it's, it's very cool um and and you we do see changes in the cats when we do yeah. offer them a, a better environment and one of the things that people um overlook a lot is that cats need vertical space and i'm going to send us off on a whole nother tangent so i can't go very far with this because we're over time uh but cats need vertical space which is why we made our cat condo with all these levels and yep. we, i used to have this cat tree which is now in the barn for the barn cats uh there's four levels it goes floor to ceiling it's like this nine foot cat tree awesome. Uh, awesome. but cats need that vertical space uh and a lot of times, everything that we do with our cats, we kind of look at them on the floor and then we tell them to get off the counters and off the tables and off the furniture. Cats need vertical space. We have to provide that for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely. something else to, to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, I mean, I used to keep my, in our old house, two houses ago, my cat food was up on a counter. So it was mostly to keep the dogs away from it, but it, mm -hmm. it gave the cats a safe space. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the cats was a little bit arthritic. So she had, you know, kind of stepping stones to get we to there. Steps, yeah. And their litter box was even in an elevated area. It was kind of in a, we had this great window well 
situation mm -hmm. uh, where their litter box could be elevated away from everyone. So they didn't have to worry about a dog running up to them while they were trying to sit on the toilet. Yeah, um, very much. So they are, they are very sensitive to that kind of thing. You know, litter tray, litter tray placement is, is crucial because it's not where we want it. It's not where it works for us. It's where it's right for the cat. You know, it's where that they can, like you said, not be disturbed. You know, they've, I know it sounds silly, but when I say privacy, but cats are always looking for threats, right? They're a predator and a prey animal. So they are constantly looking for what's going to affect me. What do I need to run from or attack? So when they're having a wee and a poo, the last thing they want is someone coming past or walking through because they're like, oh my god you know and that can lead to you know issues of holding it and stuff so you're absolutely, you're absolutely right you know there are there are definitely things to consider and you know as long as you've got the best you can and if you want more information you know I'm all about cats so people can drop me messages or do you know what I mean I've got blogs on my site and things you know that's got uh, information and like I mentioned shameless plug you know I'm on YouTube uh, Facebook and Instagram at naturally cats right. you know right. I go live weekly and, and like you said you know the cat care summit I came across you because I saw the post of you doing the uh, um, interview with Jay and Adrienne from the Two Crazy Cat Ladies. And I'm actually doing a live with them in a couple of weeks, talking Yay. again about herbs. And that's how I found you. And I was so grateful because, you know, when I spoke to Gwen, she said about you doing more with cats. And, and I've already put my name down for the next Cat Care Summit. So, uh, but, you know, this isn't the last of me. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We need more people like you uh, to talk about our kitty cats and help us because a lot of us, you know, we have dogs, but we also have cats. And that's kind of how we're branching out into the horse stuff and the chicken stuff yeah. and the goat stuff, because we're like, OK, we're not the only ones who have chickens in our backyard and have horses in our backyard. So, Absolutely. OK, Julianne, thank you so much. This has been very fun and enlightening. Everyone, if you want to learn more, go to Naturally cats.co.uk um, look for her book on her website on amazon eventually we'll have all this on our website but in the meantime she'll ship it over from the other side of the pond <laughs> and uh, i look forward to a a long and lasting relationship where we can get more education for our poor little kitty cats so everyone oh let's see if i can get music i don't know uh some days it goes well and Welcome. go come on there we go <laughs> close <laughs> you got it thank you so much Julie. Hey, i got it on the right page day. today I'm, I'm i'm happy with that supporters for those of you who were looking for me last night and were worried about where i was i was lost uh, so tonight <laughs> i will do the presentation again on the correct page um and so uh, i promise not to be lost tonight <laughs> Thank you so Julianne, much for having me, GD. So and thank everyone, you everyone have a that wonderful day. This. Supporters, we'll see you tonight. <laughs> Hi, everyone.